E is going on guys, it's EOG, welcome to another video where I will go over my current SSF progress in SSF Ritual League, uh, together with the Echoes of the Atlas expansion progress that I've made on my Archmage Cremation Necromancer. Now this build is a very tanky build. It doesn't really deal that much damage until you get good gear, so it's not a perfect SSF starter, but you can pull this off as a Hierophant for example, which will in the very end game not be as tanky but uh, can deal the same and more more damage with easier to acquire gear so if you're looking for a more friendly ssf starter this is not really it i wanted to a little bit challenge myself with starting this but also at the same time just make a really chunky tank and this ended up being a very chunky tank i've done quite a bit of end game uh, up until this point on this build and at uh, almost cap block at 68 block and 75 spell block uh, uh, like buffed and with roomies up and with my uh, bone offering up which is up all the time the roomies isn't quite up all the time of course um this build's really tanky i've done a few uh, awakener four series because my damage is still a bit low as i mentioned it's, it takes a bit but it's getting there it's getting there like since the some of the footage you will see in the background but damage has gone up by almost 50 percent i started up around 20k average hit tooltip I'm, I'm like around 30k um or closing in on 30k i think 29.5 and the damage is uh, shaping up and getting quite a bit better so awakening uh, for zero is pretty easy to do deathless um i've like even you, i can tank die beams uh, no problem on that stage and it's it's pretty pretty easy just with the block and the life gain on block that you have also the sustain on the build is amazing between dynamo um arcane cloak and uh, of course agnostic region it's pretty damn good um uh the life charge uh, life last charges the mana flask charges you get back from uh, the sniper smart curse is also insane on this build so yeah Playstyle is amazing, great for bossing because you don't have to stand still and stand near the boss. You can just like place the things and focus on dodging and place the craters that erupt. Um, which I think is really, really nice for this current patch. And uh, yeah, I've, what, what else have I done? I've done uh, the uh, four Shaper Guardian invitation of, of Maven. I've done a few 10 boss fights. Uh, still have a few to go though. Um, I'm currently sitting at 9 out of 10 Maven Splinter, so I've not done Maven yet. Um, and I've done a... A maven assisted shaper also known as shaven maper and i've done a, a elder that is assisted by assisted by a maven which is known as an even molder and uh yeah currently it's uh it's doing pretty well builds pretty good so let's have a look at the full character for those of you who are interested in what i've been up to and what i've been doing in ssf and what my gear actually looks like and then um yeah i'll go a bit more about what i plan to do with the build what i'm looking forward to do soon also what i'm going to do on stream so if you want to see me play this build live uh, check out twitch.tv slash it's um i'm streaming there like a few days a week it's pretty fun um yeah so come say hi and ask questions about the build now but now let's look into the character's gear and the whole progression how that all fits together into this tanky mess of a half of a dps build so here we are now with a character called Yoji Erupts because of uh, volcanoes and stuff, right? Nothing else, just volcanoes. Uh, currently sitting at uh, level 95 with 5k HP, about 6.5k mana, and uh, yeah, I got a perfect crown over the inward eye which dropped from a series, which is really nice. It's also currently incubating, um, incubating stuff. Um, this shield uh, I'm looking to finish. That spell block chance, which is really nice and gives me a capped spell block once I'm at. Uh, once I'm fully buffed, together with uh, these perfect spell block rainbow strides, which also drop like this. Um, I got pretty lucky on these. And uh, yeah, I'm looking to um, augment a spell, spell caster modifier on this, which hopefully ends up being a high spell damage roll. I think that would be really nice, um, just to give a bit extra damage, because damage is like the only thing this build really struggles with, with at the time. Um, this is a pretty nice ring that I recently made. I fractured uh, with Harvest the uh, tier 1 mana on this. And now I have a pretty high mana ring. I could probably bless this, this implicit up for like a tiny bit of extra mana, but I think I'm pretty short on blessed orbs. I don't know if the drop rate has been nerfed, or I'm just like too stupid to pick that up. This ring is pretty bad. Um, definitely looking to replace this, but I need the dexterity currently. Um, I'm looking to replace the amulet with an Aziris foible, which uh, would also then free up some dexterity for this slot or for this slot, because the, the build is pretty dexterity hungry with a sniper's mark needing 155, I think, at level 20. Um, and I think uh, the GMP here as well, which needs 111. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty steep on the dexterity requirement. Same with like strength as well, but as you can see, strength is not as much of an issue. But yeah, I'm rocking a vigilant strike general's cry setup that also uses the vigil jewel, and that allows me to use the war cry, which then summons minions, which punch enemies with vigilant strike, which then gives me 35 plus seconds of fortify. I made a whole video about that, so if you want to check that out, check that out. Um, but yeah, currently this is the passive tree. What I did is when I leveled, I just leveled with magma or what's called now rolling magma. 
and I just went through here, spell damage, um, picked up some mana, and then I think I leveled through here and then I just back into this. And yeah, just, just pick up mana and stuff as you go, and at, at level uh, 28 you can spec into Cremation with Desecrate, and then at level 31 you can pick up Archmage and just spec into mana. Uh, I wouldn't use Arcane Cloak until you got a Dynamo spec'd in, I think at that point it's it's pretty good, and then just like invest more into mana, you can pick Mind Over Matter up to be uh, more tanky, definitely pick up Elemental Overload super early, so what I did, I just went through here, went through here, picked up Elemental Overload, and then... I think I went here for like some resistances, and you should definitely pick up Spiritual Aid as well because all the small nodes are 10% uh, minion damage still, that's like 40% damage from this, plus this wheel itself was also pretty good. Um, I have this for some decks, I really hope to unspec this at some point for to get also get some dexterity back. I think that Zeris Foible will um, will uh, solve that issue, and the pl plan on how getting uh, how I'm wanted to want to get a Zeris Foible is I'm chancing power amulets, but that hasn't uh, done anything yet, uh, anything yet, and I want to farm the uh, the Admirer card, which gives a random Aziri item, and the most common outcome, uh, outcome should be the Aziri Shield, the Aziri's Mirror, but the second most common outcome I think would be Aziri's Foible, because Aziri's Disfavor, or our Aziri's, uh, what are they called, the Gloves? Aziri's, I have forgotten. I don't, I have no idea, but those Gloves are super Omega Rare, so they shouldn't, shouldn't show up before the, before the Amulet. And Acuities, that's what they're called, Aziris Acuity. So I think we should be pretty good on that. Aziris Splendor, I think, can also show up, I guess. And yeah, Battle Rouse, really nice to gain back some mana. And overall, pretty pretty smooth build. What I specced into, I specced into uh, Platebringer, then Corpse Pact, and then Essence Glutton, and it took me forever to get Mistress of Sacrifice because Uberlap took forever. The build is way less tanky without uh, the Bone Offering uh, block from this, but you can easily find like tier 12 ish maps without falling over. Uh, on the just on the mind over meta defenses with agnostic that's pretty fine other than that there's just some block here aspect damage and block basically where i could and mana it's really like it's a pretty simple three um jewel wise as i said the vigil is here there's a corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on me jewel there's also some block attack damage on here but that's the other stats, as you can see, don't do anything. I just want to corrupt the blood immunity, freeze up my uh, flasks a bit, which is nice. Um, that's a pandemonium eye jewel. It's pretty decent. Gives me a little bit of cast feed, some nice damage, some mana. That's a pretty, pretty good damage jewel. And right here, I have a thread of hope, which allows me to spec uh, some stats. It's mainly here currently because I don't really have a better jewel. I don't think you need the thread of hope. I think a good jewel could be better. But there's, you can spec. Um, I think there's a lot ring. Yeah, it's a lot ring. And uh, gives me some penetration and gives me some lightning damage. I think that's pretty good. Uh, intelligence is equals mana, so this is actually quite a bit of extra mana. And then I will spec into uh, another 25 uh, lightning damage and some lightning resistance just to make gearing a bit easier. I think it should be, should be pretty worth it as well. And there's not really much else uh, I could be getting. I mean, you could spec into a lot of stuff that doesn't really help the build. So it's not a, the greatest threat of hope. Honestly, and I could probably eventually replace it with a great, uh, with a great jewel that is just a rare jewel with good stats, like maybe, maybe like this one, maybe a bit better. But yeah, currently it's the best thing I have. It's SSF life, and eventually I'll spec into arcane capacitor once the arcane surge override bug is finally fixed, which I hope it will soon be. But yeah, that's that's uh, the passive tree for the build. Um, Something that people ask a lot is MTX, so I'll go over that in the end. Um, my chest piece, I crafted this uh, chest piece. Uh, this started off as a Carnal Armor, level 80, I level, uh, level 81. I s randomly slapped a influence on it with Harvest, and it ended up being Shaper. Shaper now is happens to be the perfect influence. Um, I put on the uh, quality mana per... Uh, per quality, it has 42 quality, so that's uh, quite a bit of extra mana, uh, just as a flat, uh, also has a mana implicit by default, and this has a... Um, Percentage mana roll, which is perfectly divined, a flat mana roll, which is perfectly divined, a um, mind over matter roll, which is perfectly divined, um, some lightning res, and the quality that I bench crafted on. I will eventually, um, so how I made this, I would just uh, got the shaper chest piece, I alteration regaled it until I had a percentage mana and lightning res, for example, like percentage mana prefix and any useful suffix. And then I regaled it and hit uh, tier 4 ma flat mana, and I thought that was good enough to keep go working on this. Then I augmented it another. Um, another influence modifier that ended up being um, that ended up being the uh, mind over matter effect, which is the perfect outcome. But if I hit anything else, uh, you can remove most of the other ones. I think the other ones that could roll on there would, for example, be uh, damage taken physical damage taken as cold damage. I can remove that with remove cold or remove, remove physical without an issue. And then I perfectly divined this. Uh, so I divined the mana 
by itself and then I uh, can use the harvest randomize uh, life modifiers because this is a life modifier that might have a matter of fact to just reroll the mom until it's 10% as well which is good so I'm half I'm having a 10% mom effect right now which is kind of nice would you use a cloak of defiance over this you could but this is also pretty damn nice and I don't have a cloak of defiance could, could definitely try it out though but this is this is pretty good and i'll eventually i'll try to add more influence modifier on this and remove stuff again until i have uh, until i hit recover i think it's like few percent of mana on kill which is really nice because eventually i don't want to anoint mind drinker anymore but mind drinker is nice so if you don't want to mind drinker is it is this over here it's um some nice mana and it's two percent mana recovery on kill and that, that will eventually be replaced by my chest piece and then i'll put on arcane swiftness which is another bit of extra block and this will end up giving me 70 percent increased damage which hopefully will really help my damage out as well but i'll put that on the azir's foible and not put it on anything else before that because that needs two silver orioles and i only have one currently so it's going to be a bit now a bit uh, longer the belt's pretty crap honestly i need really need to replace this it's such a bad belt uh the jewel in here is pretty cool though it is a maximum life onslaught on kill and a phasing on kill which is how i get onslaught and phasing just for clearing makes a lot nicer especially phasing is really important i feel for rituals with all the clusterfuckerinos happening and also just in the multi-boss fights as well and yeah well what do i have i have a freeze removal here i have movement speed here and I have an uh, enduring mana flask of curse removal here and some bleed removal here, which is just for punctures because I'm corrupted but immune. That's really it. Gem, gem wise, uh, second wind, arcane cloak, increased duration, arcane surge. That's pretty pretty standard. Gives me um, gives me a huge arcane surge, a huge arcane cloak, cloak uh, for defensive and offensive purposes. On my trigger scepter, which is also still to be greatly improved, hopefully soon. Um, probably remove cold and then multi mod this. Um, I have a bone offering for the block and the life gain on block. Sniper's mark is really nice because the marks are really fiddly to, to put on enemies, but it's super nice to have just have them um, uh, automated because they'll like auto-target random mobs. And this gives you fast charges back when you hit cursed enemies, which is amazing, by the way. The splitting thing doesn't happen on creation. That doesn't matter. It's just for the increased damage taken and the um, the super amazing fast charge generation. We have conviction for exposure, which is nice. Level 1, so it doesn't does knock me out. Uh, smoke mine, second wind, smoke mine just for the movement speed. That's why I have detonate mine on this, so I have to manually cast Arcane Cloak. If you don't like that, you can just not use smoke mine, just use flame bash instead. And Enduring Cry, which I have on my second bar on space. So this is a very button heavy build, by the way, uh, on space to just have, gain some endurance charges if I need them and get some uh, surge of life regen for even better sustain. Sigil of Power is really nice. We put it down, gives you, gives you, so you can. Uh, Gives you like extra buff, gives you a lot, lot of damage as you can see here that you can gain from that. This is not even, elemental overload is not even up here then. Really, really improves your damage. Gives you higher mana cost of skill, some added flat mana, some less damage dealt by enemies in the circle. It's pretty nice. And yeah, I talked about the Vigilance Strike. What else do we have? Uh, spell Cascade, Desecrate and Faster Casting just to get, as you can see, just get more Desecrates happening at the same time. And a Tempest Shield that I just put on to give me a little bit of extra block i made that invisible because i felt, felt like it doesn't look very nice that's really the build and then there's intensify arc mage lightning penetration create a multiple projectiles cremation and amount of focus which is the super basic standard everyone runs this setup on cremation there's really nothing, nothing special about that so yeah mtx wise i'm using the new faith elite faith swan um pack which i think is really nice with the like every, everything is that it really fits my hideout as well i had the hideout before but this fits in just so nicely uh water elemental footprints because i felt they fit well illusionist weapon hydro weapon effect i just felt like these fit well i hide the shield because i don't have a fitting shield mtx and i also hey, hide the tempest shield um cremation has the quicksilver cremation because it's not as harsh on the eyes as the red flashy ones and yeah, stitch and flame dash just because the red flame dash doesn't fit with the bluish greenish whitish outfit uh, Stitch and Desecrate, yeah, set, hide the, hide the, uh, Tempest Shield. That's really it. And that really concludes, uh, the whole, like, build overview. That's what I've been doing. Um, as I said, I'm going to do Maven soon. I'm going to progress further into the Uncharted Realms, uh, passive trees, do some more Elder Fights, ooh, um, to some more uber maven invitations try all that stuff out see how my build fares against that so far it's been really really tanky died very few times in the end game once the setup was was 
like nearing completion or like nearing the current state and i'll keep you updated if i can actually get to one dps currently i'm on a quest to from zero to one dps uh, that's a bit of a meme but it's i'm just trying to like get out of the zdps hole that i've been in for a while and currently it's, it's feeling pretty good like 50 percent more damage i've been acquiring so far i think i can probably get another like 10k average hit which will be another like 20 25 um 25 30 percent more damage I maybe can squeeze out of this setup, but it's going to be more difficult. They're probably going to replace the belt, as I said, the gloves, one of the rings. The rainbow strides might not be my end game. Uh, maybe get a better shield even as well. Maybe some mana gain on block on the shaper shield if I can manage that. And the weapon still has a lot of room to grow. And as I said, as I said I'm going to farm in a serious foible if that is at all possible. That's basically the plans. Check out the stream if you want to see that. Otherwise, I'm going to give you updates on the YouTube about that as well. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters for their support of support of support of support of this. As always, you guys are amazing. Uh, until then, I'm Yoji, and I will see you soon.